you know, Red's about about taking anything perfect and screwing it up. And I, I think that like there's a, there's a part there's lines in that song which I wanted to to be kind of you know to sort of describe how you know how well politics is at the moment, like invading a country and for no particular reason other than to sort of you know gain some sort of feeling of, of power or, or whatever. You know, and I think that that's what. You know, that's what America's been doing for a little while. And the whole world's joined in, really, you know, mm -hmm. going to the Middle East and doing all that. And I think that that's kind of when, you know, the line in it, you know, um, you know, like, I can't do this by myself. It's sort of like saying, well, you know, you kind of, you know, any situation that happens that, that has a negative tinge to it, you, you do need kind of like a whole bunch of people to sort of help out in, in sort of resolving it. You know, that's what's on It was really written about, like, you know, that kind of feeling you have when you're a teenager and you sort of like, you know, you meet that girl and you're just like, wow, I will literally sort of do anything to, you know, to kind of like get her attention. Yeah, it was weird. Like, I, I never really thought about that too much. I didn't really know, you know, that there's like, you know, Five million kids in Manchester who want to stab me in the head after singing their favorite Smith song, but um, but no, nah, it ended up being okay. I mean, I, I think that there was a lot of people who wanted to hate, like a lot of Smith fans who wanted to hate it, but but actually kind of did like it genuinely. And I had I had people come up to me saying, you know, I really wanted to hate that song when I first heard it, but I, but I like it. You know, I mm -hmm. actually do like it. So that was kind of cool. Morrissey said he liked it, so I'm happy with that. Uh, I think I'm, you know, I've definitely grown up a bit. I don't think I really fight <laughs> anymore. It depends what you say next. <laughs> um, no, nah, I, I guess it's just, you know, people are people. Everyone has a different, you know, different sides of them, different things that they, you know, react in different ways to different situations. Mm -hmm. I think I used to be a lot more aggressive and sort of hot-headed when I was a kid. And then that calmed down a little bit. I'm 27 years old. Like I'm a grown, grown man. I don't think there's any room to be kind of like overreacting to things. But I remember as a teenager, anything was sort of set me off, right. <laughs> and that landed me in a lot of trouble. But um, but no, I like to. I, I definitely consider myself a, more of a lover now. <laughs> we met about seven years ago. Um, he heard one of the like demos that I made when I was yeah, like one of my first demos I made in Melbourne, and he uh. What do you do? Yeah, he called me up out of the blue and sort of just, you know, said, I like what you're doing. I want you to come to New York and, and you know, so we can get in the studio. So I did that. I went to New York. We spent about a week or two hanging out, making songs. And then um, and then I just kept in contact. We kept in contact. I mean, at the time, he was kind of, you know, he was a DJ primarily, so he was wanting to get more into production. And I guess he saw my project as a way to do that. And at the same time, I wanted to find a producer that understood what I was, you know, what I was trying to do. Mm -hmm. So it worked well. Mm. Are you pleased with the results of the album? Yeah, I, lo I mean, I couldn't be more happy with the album. It's exactly what, I spent a lot of time making it exactly what I wanted it to be, you know, I wouldn't change a thing on it. No, I've never been offered a party in Home and Away on Neighbours. Would you like to? I would love to. <laughs> I would jump at the chance. Is there any particular part that you want to <laughs> I want to take Alf Stewart. Place. But yeah, it's it's kind. Of, I was I was kind of looking at the, at the um, you know the people that are around at the moment making music, and it does seem as if like the last two years were kind of dominated by 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 girls, mm. and now it's kind of like there's suddenly this kind of um, you know it's like the guys turn to do it, I guess. In many ways, the guys and the chance. Yeah, yeah. It's sexy. <laughs> take my shirt off and do that, <laughs> sing it at the top of my lungs. No, I mean, yeah, it's great. I mean, the first time I heard my songs on the radio, it was like, you know, because you're in the studio, you're making this song for yourself, and then you hear it on the radio, it's kind of, it's a, it's a cool feeling. Boy George and Michael Jackson's surrogate son. <laughs> that would be amazing. That would be an interesting home run. No, I don't know, probably, I, I mean, I think that, like, I could be an adult, like, I think I could, 
like maybe if 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 Brad Pitt and um and Angelina Jolie adopted me, I think I'd make an amazing addition to their family. And you're from Australia. They haven't got one from Australia, so. I know I could yeah. be Australian. Yeah. Um, charity adoption. Yeah. <laughs>